Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokush here, and I'm really excited today to be responding to an email from one of our new friends from the Taxationist Theft Tour, Andrea Campton, and we had a lot of fun hanging out with her when we were in town for our San Francisco events, and I won't give away her email, but I'll just say that it contains Nintendo Gal, to give you some idea, and uh, just had such a great time with her. She writes, uh, subject, not sure about a few things, I know you probably receive a billion, perhaps a slight exaggeration, emails a day, but I honestly couldn't think of a better person to ask. Completely understand if you never get back to me, especially with those recent trailer issues. Yeah, it's been fun. Wish I had a way to help. Anyway, I'm such an infant. As I've been getting more involved lately with the party, I noticed how much knowledge I lack. Uh, and I just go, oh, you, you, this is, I, I see where this is coming from. And it's, it's really just a, a, a sort of unhealthy position to be thinking that you need knowledge or, uh, you know, data or whatever, just this, this huge background reading books to be able to be an effective activist. Heavy reading or independent study was never my forte. I enjoy mingling with people and seeing how they tick, which helps me understand the world better. As I start to consume more of your media, it is daunting examining the knowledge gap. Well, it's actually more important if you want to connect with people to have what you already have. I'd like to think I share this with you, that I, I have a desire to understand people. I love meeting people. I love talking to people. It's a huge part of my activism and a, a big part of what I love about being on the road. And it's just, you don't need to know all of the details. You don't need to have all of the data to understand what it takes to connect with people about what you're passionate about, to share your joy, to share exciting ideas in a way that communicates that passion. So you mentioned MBTI, that's Myers-Briggs type inventory or the Myers-Briggs personality test. So I'm going to assume you know the basics of personalities. My type ENFP isn't one for hitting the books hard. Even reading Freedom is taking a century and I absolutely love the content. And by the way, yes, and this is, uh, I get to do a little plug for my book here, thank you very much, because it's just a hundred pages. Freedom, freedom, and it's free, you can get it for free at thefreedomline.com. To make it, I wrote it to make it as easy as possible for someone to get all this. So if you can just get through this book, you don't need to read any more books. You don't need to study monetary policy or any other part of economics or history or philosophy even. If you just get these core concepts of the message of freedom, it really shouldn't be that complicated. And for most people, it doesn't it require that much data to embrace the ideals of freedom. So, what I lack in book knowledge, I make up for in passion. Again, so much more important. The problem becomes that while I may feel this is the correct path, it's never easy for me to explain why it is so in a logical manner. Now, here's a problem with libertarians. We're too logical, right? And you go, how is that a bad thing? Well, when you're doing outreach and your activism, you're talking to other people, it's really important to remember that we're not talking to rational people because people aren't rational as much as libertarians would like to pretend that we are some exception to the rule we are not either and humans are fundamentally emotionally driven creatures yes we are all you can we can debate this forever i don't, I don't care to get into this but we are all irrational at some times and especially in our support of government we are especially irrational so it's really important to remember that when you're doing this, when you're talking to people who aren't on the same page as us, to be loving and kind and compassionate and understanding. And if anything, this is this is the Adam Kokesh school of libertarian outreach. And you've seen this in my videos where I do man on the street stuff to connect with people. It's not about throwing facts at them. It's, it's about connecting with people. And that's not an intellectual, rational process so much as an emotionally driven one. She writes, I've become the secretary for the San Mateo chapter now, I guess, which is awesome. Not just because, hey, you're jumping in with the Libertarian Party or the secretary, but San Mateo, that's where I grew up. I was born in San Francisco, grew up in the Bay Area, San Mateo especially. So it's really awesome to know that in my original hometown, there is a vibrant Libertarian movement. 
So I've been doing studying for that, but I'm a tad bit on the fearful side because I lack the historic details or the data points or other things. Gosh, no, no, no. And this is part of the general social conditioning to make you feel disempowered, right? You're not ready for this. You need more data. You need more education. You need more approval from authority. You need that stamp. You know, and it's just, no, no, no. This is like saying, well, I, I can't go skiing because I, I, don't, I don't have my umbrella. Just, you don't need it, all right? Get over it. Get out there. Just do it. I think this is basic, good, solid advice for your life in general. Just do it. Just get out and do it. And if you don't have the data that you need and you fail, well, then you're probably going to find out faster what you need. Fail fast. Keep going. Get up. Do it again. Keep moving. And figure it out as you do it. You're going to be way better off than the people sitting at home wringing their hands. Oh, gee, I don't have enough data. I'm sitting here being fearful, paralyzed. No, don't do that. So, uh, now she says, and this is, by the way, this is really cool because I know this about Andrea. This is absolutely true. She says, to be clear, I'm not fearful in a caring how I look when I ask questions sort of way. I'm fearful because during and after the parade we recently did in San Jose, I wasn't sure what I should be saying. The only things I could think of were lots of freedom and liberty, but I'm not the best at expressing why these are beneficial. Now, I just want to point out one other strategic approach in trying to communicate ideas with passion in a way that connects with the person you're talking to, right? In the Marine Corps, I was a recruiter's assistant for a while. I know, it's embarrassing. And we did this benefit tags thing. And this is a, a basic sales tactic, right? But it's also a way of, of just communicating in a way that connects with people more effectively. We would put these little plastic tags out on the table, or the recruiters would, and ask recruits or potential recruits, which of these, which three of these are the most beneficial to, or the most interesting to you? And there was like education benefits, pride and belonging, physical fitness, job training, blah, 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 right? And so you, you would pick out three and they would pitch you on those three. It's like, you know, don't pitch someone on education benefits if he just wants to go kill brown people on the other side of the planet, right? I mean, basic logic there. So, you know, you're asking, what should I say? You know, if you're really in conversation with people, ask them questions, talk to them, find out what, what they want, what their attachments to statism are. But the other thing, and, and this is an important shift that we're bringing as part of the new strategy, uh, the new libertarian strategy of achieving a free society, rather than being a debate club we're going to be a political force when we apply our principles to make life better for everyone. So localization, decentralization. You want government to do X? Okay. Would, would you mind if it does it voluntarily on a community basis instead of on a huge national level? Because we don't want to take over the country and impose libertarian policy on everyone. No. We want to respect the right of self-determination, not just of individuals, but of communities, when it's communities based on individuals who have come together peacefully. So this gives you a lot more flexibility a lot more open-mindedness and what you can communicate when talking about your principles. All right, so um, I have zest and passion, so I guess why I send this is because I took the advice from Ben and Zach. This is Ben Farmer and Zach Foster, two amazing gentlemen who are traveling with us on the Taxation and Theft Tour right now. Uh, and Ben is uh, our not campaign manager. That's Ben at thefreedomline.com. And Zach is not officially affiliated, but he is writing my biography right now. So really excited to have that going. But Zach is, is a passionate dude. So he's, when we're on the road, talking to people like Andrea, getting them involved and, uh, you know, motivating and inspiring people. So great to have people like that with us. Now that I'm here though, I'm just not sure what I should be telling people at a booth, for instance. Well, I've never heard anyone say that they were converted to libertarianism because someone was talking to them at a booth. You know, it's, it, you're planting seeds, you're getting intrigued, uh, you're getting people intrigued, piquing their interest, uh, you know, showing them so that there's something that, uh, you know, beyond what they're being told. Or if they're already on board, you're, you're, you're giving them an opportunity to get involved and uh, satisfy their drive for activism themselves. So, you know, just think about this as in any other conversation. It's, it's a mechanism to connect with people. Basically, I'm not sure how to approach people who I don't know, who don't have any idea about the party. There's no real organization, and I get a different answer from everyone I ask. Well, that's because 
You get to make the Libertarian Party whatever you want. This movement is determined by people who show up. The form of what we do is determined by people who show up and do stuff. The biggest division in this movement is not between the anarchists and the minarchists or the paleo whatever. No, it's between the doers and the talkers. Be a doer in your talking. But don't sit back and talk about the organization and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Screw all that. Get out and start doing it and connecting with people and make it what you want it to be. So as someone who talks to new folks all the time and engages with them, do you have any suggestions for an over-enthusiastic freedom zealot who doesn't want her fellow peers to be seen as vapid due to lack of cohesive, sensible answers when on the spot? No. Uh, just <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. If you have a... You, you will not be seen as vapid. You are already a, a level more intellectual than most of the people that you're going to be talking to. So don't worry about that. But also embrace the ignorance of things that are irrelevant. We don't have to have every little answer to every little question to be effective advocates of ethics. And that's, again, what we get when we take this out of the realm of politics. So, oh, geez, um, I, I guess I've covered everything. But just um, to reiterate for you, you know, be loving, be compassionate, be authentic, connect with people, and ultimately... You can't go wrong because you'll be enjoying your own freedom. All right. On that note, mwah, peace, love, and freedom.